In today's special segment, a young Ghanaian entrepreneur is set to change how parcels are delivered in Ghana and on the continent of Africa with his smart lockers in the capital Accra. Also, a young Kenyan lady, Yen Zambi Mate, is also changing how plastics are used on the continent. Well, if they are not choking our gutters, probably they can fix our deplorable roads. Also, in similar segment, Nail Plus Ghana is changing how plastics are also used in Ghana. Well, if they are also not killing you by causing flooding, they might rather put a roof over your head to stop the rain. So we ask the question, are Africans beginning to use their problems to solve their problems? For more on this, it is Sam from the Black Street Tonight African Rising channel. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Now welcome back. This is the Black Suit Tonight Africa Rising channel and my name is Bequim Bernard Boomer. Now, <laughs> this is one of the episodes that, you know, we just keep the camera rolling. So in Zambia, Mate of Gwenge Makers, <laughs> well, I don't know if it's Gwenge or Gwenge, uh, please, the Kenyan, Swahili, uh, what is, how to say that? Leave it in the comment section. If you can actually say it in the comment section, say it and let me see. Oh my goodness. All right, so it's Gwenge Makers. Okay, so what is the problem that we are having now? You see, every year there are about 380 billion bottles or plastics that are made in this world. And about only 7% of this figure is recycled. Now the chunk of the rest end up in Asia and Africa, and sometimes even in the Latin Americas. Even when they land in the North Americas and Europe, they find a way to turn these plastics into useful products. And probably that is where the 7% recycled are coming from. Now we have some African innovators. Now speak about Izambi Mate of Kenya, 29 years old. Oh my goodness, <laughs> she's not just beautiful. Now I mean, I was speaking about beauty, you know, Africans only talk about beauty. I mean, look at the lady. <laughs> Oh, the calves and that smile. And she's also very energetic and, of course, innovative and at least very smart. You can't take that one away from her. If she sat down to think about a Kenyan problem, not even a Kenyan problem, an African problem, because think of it, there are lots and chunks of plastics that end up in Africa. I mean, if there is flood in Africa, it has nothing to do with an open dam. But if there is a flood in, let's say, Asia or even in Europe, then you know that probably it is a dam that was open for hours. It is probably a gutter that has been choked or a seaway that has been choked with plastics. And so a lot of people have lost their lives because of these plastics and all that. And so she trying to turn this into something else. And when I speak about something else, what is she turning this into? So she has made up a machine or she has come up with a machine that is able to shred these plastics, whether it be bottles, plastic bags or anything, into tiny pieces. And then she mixes it with sand and then put it under deep heat, melt it all together, and you see how the plastics are sticky and all that? Yes, tend to bind, serve as a binder with the sand. And so it becomes something harder, pressed, and then they dry it and it become bricks. And because the plastic that has been messed with the sand, this object, which a normal block would have weighed, is actually weighing like half. So they are lightweight bricks that are used as pavement blocks or bricks, any way you want to put it. Actually, out of this invention or innovation, she, in Zambi Mate, won the African Champion of Earth 2020 award from the United Nations Environment Program. I mean, you can't take that one from her. She is smart and brilliant and actually tackling an environmental issue, not just solving an African problem, but she is actually tackling a great world problem. Uh, how much are they producing? Now, she says that because of the capacity and now since it's, it's in its beginning stage, they are actually producing about 1,500 pieces of these blocks a day. This is it blocks or bricks? Okay, bricks. Yeah, these pavement bricks a day. And mind you, because of the weight, it is easily transportable and it is durable. Very hard. Yeah, she's showing you there, right there. Really, really hard. I mean, this lady is lovely. Oh my goodness. Oh, please. <laughs> Dear future wife, uh, no offense. <laughs> Just be me. All right, so yeah, but anyway, she's very beautiful. Just as the bricks that you are making. And mind you, she has also created a job, job employing people that are working here. Now, you see, these things can be used in its cheapest form to pave our roads. And she actually has a bigger vision of actually creating or producing in large quantities so that we can actually use it to build our own houses and homes. Is that me, Martin? Congratulations and thank you for tackling one of Africa's biggest problems, waste. 
I mean, you can't take that one away from here. Now let's move on. Let's move on. Now that brings me to Ghana. Now let's move from Kenya. We are moving straight from Nairobi to Accra, Ghana, where we come to meet another person who has been in the industry of the plastic uh, conversion of plastic recycling business, Nelson Watson of Nelplus. So <laughs> now you see, it started from somewhere and another person has actually hooked up to it. And now you see, Kenya, Ghana, now we go to Rwanda, South Africa, and then we'll be turning the whole plastics on the continent of Africa into something great. What if you could actually use that as material to build aircraft? Uh, may take a while. But what if we could? Plastics? Uh. Well, let the engineers take over. I don't know what I'm thinking, but anyway, yeah, if we could, then Africa. <laughs> All right, so come on, now let's move on. So Nelson Watson, the CEO of Nail Plus Company, in an interview with Africa's number one YouTuber, maybe not number one in terms of numbers, but you know, in terms of popularity, what Maya said that this innovation or this idea came as a result of Ghana's government initiation to ban plastics. It was an initiative that came in 2015, 2016 that plastics would be banned. Now looking at how plastics are enormous in Ghana to the point that it's choking, choking on that is a cause of flood and killing people and all that. This guy thought of a way of using or turning these things around. That is why that innovation actually came about. Now speaking about how he was able to actually successfully do this, now he spoke about the fact that when he was young, he had opportunity to work with some foreign companies that actually recycled plastics. And so <laughs> uh, trying to use that same idea, you know, <laughs> that's one thing I also, I, it will come in another chapter or in another episode, but let me say, you know, a lot of Ghanaian employees, we go to work just for the money. We don't actually try to learn. This is a typical example of excellence. And you see, he went there, he learned, and when time was up for him to move, he moved with that idea. And I'll see where he is now. So he is also turning these things into pavement blocks initially, but now he has been able to even commercialize and using it into buildings. Now, that building that you see right there, it's a building that has been made from these bricks that I'm speaking of. Bricks that are made from plastics mixed with sand. And because of how durable and how it is, you can actually use this as your foundation. Even if you don't want to use the whole bricks to build your own house, you can use it as a foundation so that water will not leak into your building to actually collapse it one day. Now, if you even want to use these materials to build your own house, as small as $10,000, that's about 60,000 Ghana cities, can get you a fully furnished house. Okay, not, not furnished. Of course, you use these bricks <laughs> to furnish your house. But I mean, getting it built up to the roofing level, about 60,000 will do that for you. Think of, think of it. Now, come to think of it, that just 60,000, you can own your own house. How cheap is that? Hey man, even my own house, man, the roofing alone is about 70,000. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, so anyway, let's move on. All right, so that is some of the things that Nelson is actually doing. And I think these invention and innovations are something that we cannot leave it without talking about them. So Nel Plus, thank you. And Gwenja Makers, thank you for turning an African problem into solutions. Now let's move on to our very last story. Godwin Ajapon of Ghana. Yes, <laughs> this guy is literally tapping resources from the sun, which is abundant in Africa, especially in Ghana and those living on the equator, to solve an African problem. I mean, have you had a conversation with a friend and the person told you that, oh, this thing that I need to deliver to you, I'm coming. In five minutes, I will be there. And the person has taken literally like four hours to arrive. Yes, it happened. It happened to me and it will happen to you too. But wait, maybe not you because there's a solution that has come. If someone needs to deliver something to you and you think the person will not come early or the person cannot deliver it on time, then seek or look no further. Go for locker. Now, when I speak about locker, it's not L-O-C-K-E-R. It's L-A-C... L-O-C-Q... L-O-C-Q-A-R, locker, yes. Okay, so locker, Ghana. These are smart lockers. And when I speak about smart lockers, these are solar-powered shelves that are built to hold parcels, gifts, and other gadgets or any other equipment temporarily in the capital of Ghana. Now, speaking about the capital of Ghana, this is where they have started. And I know very soon they'll be heading to Kumasi, Takradi, Sunyani, and all the other places. But this, more like a pirate, 
Did I say pirate? More like a pilot project. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's beginning in Accra. So this guy who was initially living or well, studied in the US came down to Ghana and a friend had to actually deliver him a parcel and the person ended up letting him wait for quite some time. Now looking at the length of time that this guy had to wait, he began thinking, how does he solve this problem of waiting? So this is where he came about with these smart lockers. I don't know where he actually uh, got the funds from or where he actually bought these materials from, but I'm sure they are even abandoned in China here. And that's, you know, thinking about this makes me feel really useless for staying here and actually coming up with some of these things. Eh? They produce everything here in China. Eh, well, anyway. So, Gordon and Japan of Locker Ghana has come up with these smart lockers. Okay, so how does this thing work? If someone has to actually deliver a parcel, the person only just has to download the Locker app and then just follow the processes, get a code and go and open a box, put it in and send that code to the person who has to receive. So actually the people that know this particular code is the sender and the person that is to receive. And so if you don't actually have that code, there is no reason or there's no way you can actually log in or to open a particular Locker. That is as simple as it is. So a locker opens, you put in, a code will be generated, you give it to the person that is supposed to pick it up. The person comes to that code, enter it, and then that particular locker will open and he takes the parcel up. Yes, 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 I know what you are thinking. Theft. Yes. So that is why cameras are being fitted at both ends. And even if the cameras doesn't work, there are security posts or security stations that are fitted. There. there is someone, a security guard, who is always nearby at a post watching over. So the cameras are working, a security person is also working out. All right. Now, even if you should lose your parcel, uh, even if a person has to go there and maybe use a hammer or something to break in, <laughs> whether the person is wearing a mask so that the camera can't capture the face, don't worry. It will take the person literally two hours to break in, to take your parcel. And even if the person succeeds in taking it, apart from the police being at his tail, of course, of which they were they surely will now ghana security men i salute you are doing a great job fantastic job chasing i mean criminals and arm robbers and all that thank you for doing that if you lose your parcel the parcel is fully insured you will get either your money or your exact package will be bought and delivered to you so local ghana i think you have really taken a great deal of ghana and africa's problem away and i hope you'll be able to extend even into other african countries now, what actually excites me about this whole thing is that Ghana's government is coming up with an or has come up with an initiative called Amplified, which seeks to bring entrepreneurs on board for them to share their problems and how the government can help them. And I'm glad that the Ghana government has been in connection and contact with Gordon and Japan, CEO of Locker, and they are trying to see how they will be able to extend it so that these parcel snatching by Okada riders, I mean motorbike riders and all that and arm robbery and theft and all this will be cut short now another fact or fun fact about this whole thing is that it is actually cheaper than the e-bike deliveries or the people that come or the delivery companies that have taken it upon themselves to just deliver parcels your friend go and put it there you just walk around go there and pick it up it is temporary but i'm sure it works within 24 hours or even 72 hours you can now they have also come up with a package for e-commerce businesses where they will give you an api where you just work with them you have access to all their lockers now if you are a small business person you can also get in touch with them and they have a very perfect way of helping you that's all we have to bring to you tonight now my name my name is Bakun Bernard Boma and if you are here for innovations inventions that are going on in the continent of Africa in terms of how Africa is rising with innovation and inventions and all that then look no further than the Black Suit Tonight Africa Rising channel if you like this episode kindly subscribe if you even enjoyed it then please leave that like button for me hit it up destroy it here for me and it will really help with our algorithm don't forget to also share to a friend and let us know how Africa is helping if you also have certain inventions that's going on in your country that want it to be captured drop it in the comment section and don't be surprised to see it on our next episode my name is Bekwe Bernard Boma and you'll see me here then it is time for the Blacks with Tonight Africa Rise and I'll see you when I see you